Well, welcome to this week's show, all you Salisbury, Andover, Romsey, and all those viewers. I think we can recognise this, uh, folks. We're actually going down uh, the notorious Hurstbourn Tarrant Hill, where a few things have known to known to run out of control, but uh, we're going down here. There we are, look, Hurstbourn Tarrant. We're on the Newbury Road to a secret destination. I don't know if you've been reading the local paper, but uh, Ken Dykes, the editor of the Under Advertiser, rang us up and said, I like your thing you did last week on the cats. And I hope you enjoyed that. They've had lots of phone calls over there. But he said, why don't you come over to um, Hurstbourne Tarrant? And uh, just north of Hurstbourne Tarrant, he tells us, is, um, is, I suppose, a dog's home, you could call it. And uh, I think, what do they call it? The Newbury Lodge Rescue Kennels. So we're on our way over here to uh, look at the dogs. And uh, Ken actually is running in the paper a, uh, a photo a week of, of a cat or a dog uh, which needs to go to a good home. So we said to Ken, well, we'll meet you over there, Ken. We'll come and do a bit of filming. So I've got Jason with me today. And that is exactly what we're going to do. Beautiful village, Hurstbourne Tarrant there. We've got lots on the show this week for you. I think we've even got a wedding. And we're still trying to track down Georgie Fame, who's been appearing with Van Morrison in concert. Georgie's an old mate of ours, and uh, we're trying to meet up with him to find out what he's doing and what he's recording and how Van Morrison was. So um, we're going to be bringing you that, hopefully. Hopefully we'll track Georgie down sooner rather than later. But anyway... Uh, Thanks for watching the show. Hope you're enjoying it. Don't forget to ring us on Andover 390-390. Or send us a fax on 390-391 with everything that's going on in the area. And we'll cover it. So uh, we'll see you in just a minute at uh, the new dog at Rescue Kennel. So uh, see you in just a moment. Bye for now. Well, here we are approaching the kennels down a uh, little track here. And hopefully Ken Dykes from the Andover Advertiser will be here. Well, as promised, uh, here we are at the uh, Newbury Lodge Rescue Kennels. It says on there, beware of the dog, but I think if you look over there, Jason, I'm pretty sure there's a sheep, unless it's a long-haired dog, but I'm pretty sure there's sheep. Anyway, we're going to go and find Ken Dykes. Hello. 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 Aren't they beautiful? Hello. Yes. Oh, this is quite noisy. Everybody's having a little bark, aren't you? Hello. What's this? They're all having a bark, Jason. Hello. Hello. This is a quiet one. Sorry, this is a, it's a quiet one. Oh, well, he was quiet. <laughs> hello. Everybody's having a bark. Well, hello. Funny, when you put the microphone there and they stop barking. Because you think it's something to eat, don't you? Yes, you do. Oh, here's... Here we are. Here's, here's a Dulux dog. Hello. Hello, babes. I'm not going to put my hand in uh, any of these uh, kennels because I'm not quite sure how friendly the, uh, the dogs are, but... Uh... Hello, what's your name? My name's Mr. Webb. Hello, Mr. Webb. I'm Alan from Town TV. Thanks for inviting us over. It's quite noisy, isn't it? <laughs> They're, um, some of them are um, unwanted and some are boarding. They're not all... Um, oh, I see. Some are, some are actually boarding, yeah, and some are unwanted. Boarding. He's boarding. What's his name? She. It's Mut a she? Yeah. It's Mutty or something like that. Mutty. <laughs> that one's boarding, so that's all right. So, uh, it's spotlessly clean, isn't it? You do a really good job. No. Try our best. Yeah. That little one there, um, the little black one, came up from Wales yesterday. Yeah. Had he not come to us, came with four other little puppies. Yeah. Had he not um, come to us last night, he would have been put down today. Well, she doesn't look too pleased to see us. This little one, um, Who's this one here? Came to us as a stray, so we don't know his name. Oh. We've had him a few weeks now, but um, yeah. we don't know much about him at all, really. <laughs> 
what breed, what breed is this? She's an English Bull Terrier. English Bull Terrier. <coughs> She's, she was, well, not a stray, but unwanted. Um, We've had her for months. <laughs> she's, she's very pretty, isn't she? A lovely dog. Who's this cheeky little boy? He's hiding. Well, this little one's boarding. I don't know how long she's in for. I think she's in for two weeks. Right, that one's boarding. You're a little girl. She's a funny little thing. <laughs> she's boarding. This is, this is what we have this for when we bring her back. We yeah. Hook the lead off with that because she snapped at you. Oh, is she? Well, that's enough to melt, that's enough to melt, melt your heart, isn't it? Look at that. Jeanette, come here. Come over here, Jeanette. Now, they're beautiful, aren't they? What are those? They're lovely. Well, we think they're uh, nurture Labrador crosses, but um, we've got homes for two of them. But, uh, you know, we want homes for the rest of them. We've got about 15 now. Oh, they're yeah. lovely, aren't they? That's it. And we're going to be put down, you see, uh, today. Really? So we, we just said, no, don't put them down, we'll have them. Yeah. Oh, you just couldn't you just couldn't do that to them, could you? They're so beautiful. What do you think of those, Joyce? Gorgeous, aren't they? Don't tell Chrissy back at the studio you've seen these, because she'll want one. She told me to bring one back for her. <laughs> There's some more down here. Janet, what are these? Flip them up, because um, these are a little bit thinner than the rest, so, uh, you know, we, we sort of bring these on a little bit more now. And what breed are these? These are, uh, again, our Labrador Cross uh, lurchers, we think. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you're lovely. Pretty gorgeous. They're lovely, aren't they? This little girl was in the paper. This little girl, yeah. And we've got her... We've got There's this one here, is it? This is Penny in the underwear ties Jason. There we are. So, um, you know, we hope she's going tonight to a nice home which um, the people saw her in the paper, you see, and thought that they'd come and have a look at her. All right, Penny. All right, Pen. It's all right, Penny. You'll be in a nice home tonight. Um, we've got... This is the mum of the pups. This is the mum of the pups. This is the mum. Uh, these puppies are along here, yeah. So, um, and we want a nice home for her. You see, she's beautiful. She's lovely, isn't she? She's very... Of a lurcher kind. A lurcher kind, yeah. Lurcher kind, but she, we think she's got Labrador in her as well. Yeah. But um, she's lovely. She's lovely and gentle, isn't she? Oh, she's beautiful. We've got another little lurcher girly here. A little lurcher girly. Come on, sweetie. <laughs> and uh, we've had this one for a long time. Yeah. And she came in. She looked like a rake. And uh, we sort we build them up. The trouble is, when you build them up, you don't want to part with them then. You don't, do you? No. 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 <laughs> so they look good, you know. And uh, you do worry where they go to. Thanks for inviting us out here, and it's good to see your article in the paper. Oh, good. Yeah, this, this is our first one. First of a series. We're going to be doing this every week from now on in our midweek advertiser. This week it's a dog. Next week it will be a cat. I've already got the uh, dog for the week after that. And right behind you, now over here, over there is Penny. She's the one that was featured in our very first uh, effort, yeah. and they found a new home for her. So that's our very first success. So we're very proud of that. Well, it's good, because they're saving dogs from being put down to here, aren't they? Which is great. The very, very sad thing is that some of these dogs are actually coming in under sentence of death. If they don't come here, they get put down. It's as simple as that. That's terrible, isn't it? It should never happen, really, but... I, I can't imagine what people are thinking of in sort of either bringing dogs into the world, so to speak, um, or treating them with such contempt that their lives mean nothing. I, I find that very, very sad. Well, hopefully, with the under-advertiser in town TV, we'll save all of them. Absolutely. So we'll try to find homes for all of them. That's right. We will. So... We're going to go out where it's slightly uh, less noisy, and uh, Ken's going to talk to... Uh, Janet, and uh, round the corner. Is that right? <laughs> yes. As you know, I'm Ken Dykes, editor of the Andover Advertiser. I'd like you to meet Ron and Janet Webb, who run Newbury Lodge Rescue Kennels here at Hurstbourne Tarrant. Now, Janet, how long have you been here? We've been here about 17 years, I suppose. About 17 years. And in that time, how many dogs do you think you've rescued? Oh, oh, must be... Thousands, I should think. Thousands? I'm sure it must be, yes. Now, one thing that I've wondered is, how on earth do you finance this operation here? Well, with difficulty, really. You know, I go to work. I work night duty, you see, and uh, that helps towards it all. Um, we do get some lovely people that try and help, and the Andover people are very kind. But um, it is money all the time, really. You just need extra funds to do things with, yeah. you know, and... Uh, 
you just have to improvise if you haven't got the money to do it with. And not only money, is it, that you need? Oh, we need um, blankets and pillows and duvets and all that sort of thing, you know, to keep the dogs warm and comfortable. And food? And food, of course, yes. Oh, yes. What's your food bill every week? Well, the last food bill I had was £369. Is that just for the week? Well, we, we try and stretch that a little bit to a fortnight, three weeks, if we can. But uh, if you get an influx of dogs, then it goes, you see, so you've got to order again. Yeah. You know, but uh, having said that, you've got to bring that monies in to be able to spend it all, you see. How many dogs have you got here at the moment? Ones, I mean, that are needing homes. I know that you do um, kennel some dogs commercially, a few, but most of your dogs here are actually rescue dogs, are they not? Looking for new homes. How many dogs have you got here at the moment looking for new homes? New homes. Oh, um, what would you say? 16. About 30? Mm-hmm. He's adding up. About 30, 33, somewhere about. Yeah. About Over 30 dogs looking for new homes. I was, I was looking at some figures from the RSPCA only last week, and they alone rehouse over 30,000 unwanted dogs every year. That doesn't include people like yourselves or the other agencies. Um, what is the problem with all these dogs needing new homes? Why are there so many unwanted dogs? Well, I think perhaps people get them and then. Uh, troubles occur within the marriage or family or whatever and they just can't afford to keep the dog you see do people take up dogs ownership on a whim when they ought really to be thinking very much more carefully about whether or not yeah sometimes sometimes but then we say you know we say to people look are you quite sure about this you know can you afford to keep the dog and what have you you see and if they say oh yes oh yes we can well then we go and check them out you see and see and see for ourselves and and the, okay, well then we let it go. And the problem is, of course, that a nice cuddly little dog, a nice cuddly little puppy at Christmas grows up into a huge yeah, thing that needs a lot of food and a lot of exercise and vet's bills, and suddenly that cuddly little thing is not wanted because it's too much for them. Yeah, it gets too big, you see. But um, that's what we're here for, I suppose. And the, I believe the motto, uh, the running motto of the uh, National uh, Canine Defence League is a dog is for life not just for christmas yeah. over here we've got um uh, a pet cemetery tell us a bit about this well we started this because we thought the the, the money that comes from this helps us with our rescue because we're not charity we don't run on a, a charity we're not charity and uh, we thought well if we get money from that it'll help us with our rescue you see which it does of course you know when the dogs come in um to be buried or whatever and uh, we've, we've just gone from there really and how many pets have you got buried here? Oh, um, well... I think about 180 something. About 180, I think. 180? Yeah. yeah, so... And these people pay for the plots, and that helps to finance your rescue operation? It does, yeah, yeah. They don't come in every week, of course, but uh, when it does come in, it helps, yeah. So even after a well-loved pet has gone on, hopefully it's still helping to rescue other dogs? Yeah, yeah, that's what we hope anyway. I think that's absolutely tremendous, the fact that um, this couple here, Ron and Janet Webb, uh, use all their time and all their money into rescuing dogs. You've just heard that there are five puppies in the kennels at this very moment, which, had they not been collected yesterday, would have been dead today. That's the kind of care and love that goes into this place. All I can say is... um, Try to search your heart and see if you can find a good home for one of these dogs. Now, you have to think very, very carefully about whether you can afford the dog, whether you want to give it a loving home, and it's for life. It's not just for this week or for Christmas. It's until that dog's gone, gone on perhaps to the pet cemetery here. But um, see if you can think about whether you can give a dog a home. I'd just like to ask Janet now to tell us what her telephone number is for you to contact if you want to give a dog a really good home. Janet, your telephone number. It's uh, 736 466. You've, of course. And yeah. Now you've all got that. The other thing you can do is look every week in the Midweek Advertiser. We are doing a special series, which is an indefinite series. We should be featuring a cat or a dog that wants homing every single week in the Midweek Advertiser. Look in there. You'll find all the other details that you need there, too. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Hello, Pebble. 
Does, pe does Pebble dry and bark? I wonder. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I, I mean, what do you what do you feed Pebbles on? Well, she has to have um, pig food, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, nothing else but pig food and vegetables and uh, carrots and apples and things like that. You see, chopped up. And uh, you mustn't get her too fat. Where did she Where did she come from? Well, um, she came from Southampton. Oh, right. Yes, we went and got her from Southampton because I I wanted a pig. You see. Why not? And, uh, they're meant to be very intelligent pigs, aren't they? Oh yes, she's lovely. She will sit down by your by your side of a night and sit down like a dog. Yeah, really? She, she's beautiful. <laughs> so uh, anyway, thank you, Ken. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Ken. Thank and, you, Al. Um, thank you, Town TV. Don't forget to, to ring in and speak to Janet or Ron. And uh, you can't buy the pig, but um, you can't have the pig. But uh, ring in about all those uh, stray dogs. So. Most of the others are actually wanting good homes. You've seen them, little tiny puppies, great big grown-up dogs, some lovely, lovely dogs. See if you can find some homes for them. Okay. Thanks very much indeed. Yeah, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Well, we've been uh, rushing around Hampshire and Surrey looking for Georgie Fame. My good mate Georgie Fame is um, back from his rehearsal with, with, with Van Morrison. And uh, while we're on our travels, my good friend John from the Walnut Tree said, well, I'll tell you what, he said, my daughter's getting married. He said, why don't you pop in and uh, film that as well? So we thought we'd bring you a summer, a summer wedding. And here it is in all its glory. Look, pony and traps and uh, looks absolutely wonderful. Bridesmaids. The choir's over there. Steve on the right-hand side, just ready to go in. Isn't that a pretty picture in this weather? There's John from the walnut tree. Also looking resplendent in evening dress or morning dress or, or something. And that's obviously his daughter, so isn't he a pride dad? Well, John, John looks very proud to be uh, giving his daughter away. So we'll bring you a bit of an action from a wedding. We don't normally cover weddings, but we thought, well, it's a lovely sunny day. John said, call in to see him. So we did. So here we are. This is a wonderful wedding, isn't it, Steve? Here we are. We've just turned up John's invitation and we're filming a wedding. And um, there we are. We still can't, still can't find Georgie fame, but we've been looking all over the place. There's John having his photograph taken. What a hero. So, um, we could just play out this scene to the sounds of the wedding march or something similar we can find in our um, selection of uh, tapes. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the wedding. We don't do them very often on Town TV, but we thought we'd bring you this one. So uh, that was jolly good fun, wasn't it? Thanks for watching. Back to the studio.
Well, morning viewers, as you can see, it's uh, been raining all night, a bit different from the Caribbean. Um, and that's going to be our next item. Um, Steve and I went rushing around the Caribbean last year filming a jazz cruise. And there were some great people on board, and I think not notably the Jackie McLean uh, sextet. And they had a great bass player called uh, Nat Reeves, who's absolutely brilliant. But enough of that. Um, I rang up Ray Bonner in the week and said, uh, as you know, Ray does the jazz bit for the Under Advertiser. And I said to Ray, how about coming in and talking about a local jazz scene? He said, yeah, okay. And I was telling him about the Caribbean. He said, do you know, in 1943, I was torpedoed on my way to the Caribbean. And I thought, well, that's a great story. So Ray's come in here, and as Tony's a muso, Tony's going to have a little chat with him about the jazz scene. But um, first, I guess you're going to tell us about your experiences in the Caribbean, or on your way there anyway. I'll pass you over to Tony. Yeah, well, uh, we were torpedoed in the end of February 1943. And uh, we were picked up out of the lifeboats by an American destroyer, the USS Hillary P. Jones. Hillary P. Jones. <laughs> Jones, yeah, named after a long-gone American admiral. They took us to Puerto Rico, to San Juan. Uh, then we went by an American naval transport up to Boston, and then by train up to New York. And they put us in the Hotel Woodstock just off Times Square for six weeks, waiting for a ship to be repaired in the Brooklyn Navy Yard to take it out again. Is this where your interest in jazz first started? Then? It, it is, yes, because um, I was 19 at the time, and I, you know, I listened to records of Tommy Dorsey and Glenn Miller and the big bands of the day, and there was the opportunity to go and actually see them. Wonderful, it was yeah. a hard way of doing it, but it was a good way of getting yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mind you, I hadn't got a penny in the world when I left New York after six weeks. Not a penny in the world, and. Uh, I saw Duke Ellington and had a chat with him in the interval. And I saw Tommy Dorsey at the Paramount when Frank Sinatra was the band singer. I uh, saw so Woody Herman at the Roxy Theatre. And I went to lots of the clubs on uh, 52nd Street, saw Art Tatum with Slam Stewart on bass, and there was a great bass player. It still is, I think. Mm. Uh, I also went to the uh, Astor Roof and saw the Harry James Band and for a dare from my mates, asked his wife for a dance, Betty Grable. Oh, really? Did she dance with you? <laughs> yes, yeah, she did, and she got told off afterwards <laughs> by the <laughs> producers and people who were with her. But anyway, she was very charming, actually, and, and a great dancer. Even I couldn't tread, I couldn't tread on her toes, <laughs> and I was no great dancer. So when you came back here then, your interest obviously continued in jazz. Well, and... I, I found it a bit difficult to start with because there wasn't an awful lot of jazz. It was sort of before the trad revival and I wasn't that keen on trad jazz anyway. Yeah. Mainstream was my, my favoured uh, music. Uh, then we started going to the Haywain at Cadnam, yeah. which was... Uh, forcibly closed by a London solicitor retiring to a house about 300 yards away and slapping an injunction on the place for noise. Yeah, which so was, that was the uh, end of that one? Then. That was the end of that one. Then we got to know the Alex Welsh band. Yeah. And we saw the Alex Welsh band many times. And that was a great band, in my opinion, the best seven piece we've ever had in this country. And really, my interest has kept up from there. With I've organised quite a few gigs for charity, uh, Winchester at the castle and uh, Enham and various other places. I help with the mayor's uh, uh, charity gig last, just over a year ago. Yeah. So, yeah, around, so around this particular area, is there, what's the jazz scene like? Well, taking Hampshire as a whole, it's, very, it's pretty good with some very competent local bands. Yeah. Uh, taking Andover in isolation, I'd say there are about something like a hard core of a hundred real jazz fans mm. around Do Andover. Do they turn up for the, for the gigs? If, if you put on Kenny Ball or Acker Bilk at the, uh, the theatre, uh, you'll pack the place. Yeah. But you put some really great top-class award-winning jazz musicians on yeah. and nobody knows them nobody really. knows them and they except the jazz fans and they just don't turn up which is a very great pity because they'd hear some damn good music yeah. it's all down to the publicity machine of these people like Kenny of Ball of course it is yes of course it is 
Uh, there's one pub in Andover that's been trying very hard to promote small group jazz, and that's the Anton, the mm. Anton Arms up the Salisbury Road. And they're still carrying on with that at the moment. And yeah, they I still have they... gigs up there every so yes, often? I, yes, about once a month, occasionally twice a month. What sort of musicians do they get to? Do they get guest well, musicians down from? Well, they're mostly ones that I've recommended to them, <laughs> and members of the um, Andy Dickens band, for instance. <laughs> Uh, which is a very competent mainstream band. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's been quite enjoyable. Well, you travel around sometimes, you were saying, oh, yes, to, I do. to look at bands. Yes, I do, yeah, yes. Yes, uh, the Concord Club, of course, at Eastleigh, is one of the finest jazz clubs in the country. Yeah, it's not too far away, anyway. And they, they're they able to book top-class Americans and, uh, you know, the, the very best of British jazz. So, yes, yeah. So what? Lots of jazz there, pubs in Southampton. In Southampton, oh, yeah. that's so and, and Portsmouth. Yeah. Uh, there's a good one at Hook, the Raven Hotel at Hook. Packed every Saturday night. Thanks for talking to us today, mate. No doubt you will know some of these people that are coming up on this Caribbean cruise that the lads went on last year. Uh, yes, I believe Benny Carter was involved in it. He was on the trip, and, yes. He was on the trip, yeah, yeah. An old man now, but still blows pretty well. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. 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 Right, thanks again. Uh, the Caribbean well, Jazz Cruise. Uh, Nat Reeves, uh, bass player with the Jackie McLean sec Sextet uh, this week. Nat, uh, Caribbean cruising, do you like it? Yes, I'm having a wonderful time. Yeah. Very nice time. Is it your first uh, Caribbean jazz cruise? First trip. Uh, took me a couple of days to get myself my sea legs, but I uh, feel very comfortable now and I'm having a wonderful time hearing all the music and meeting all the different musicians that I've listened to and never met. And being here with Mr. Benny Carter is a pleasure and a great experience. It must be nice for you, really, to, to meet all these different musicians. You don't normally bump into all these different guys at once. Yeah, it seems that all the musicians of this caliber all seem to meet when we go out on uh, either tours or, for instance, cruises. We seem to get together as different groups more when we leave the States or and go to Europe and Japan. And this cruise has been very nice. Well, I'm from a town in Virginia by the name of Lynchburg. Virginia. I started playing bass when I was about 16. Started on electric bass. So I grew up in the late 60s and early 70s as a teenager and I played a lot of rock and top 40 music and as I got older I began to play jazz and switched over to the string bass when I was about 22. Is that transition difficult? Uh, for me it was more of a, just a natural thing that happened. I, I was, was on a band and they told me that they liked my bass playing but they wanted an acoustic bass player. So I went out and bought a bass and played it the same night, no lessons or anything. It just came as a natural thing for me. So where are you living now? I'm living now in Hartford, Connecticut. I'm a professor at the University of Hartford. Um, Jackie McLean is the chairman of the department there and all the young musicians that you've seen are all students from that department. I just want to continue to, to, to progress as a musician, um, keep myself together and just continue to practice and try to be around as many musicians as I can and learn as much as I can and just be out here around all these wonderful people. Well, first of all, I guess I would have to say Jackie McLean is one of my first heroes. Stun Sonny Stitt, I played his last concert with him. He's one of my heroes. Bass players, Slam Stewart, uh, Ray Brown, Ron Carter, Paul Chambers, Jimmy Blanton, I mean, I could just go on and on. I like them all. I try to listen to as many uh, different musicians as I can. You still playing rock and roll or not? You just play jazz? Oh, uh, I just play jazz. Yeah. But I play electric bass also, and uh, I always like to play electric. It's more of the funky stuff. I like to play funky bass too. 
Fantastic. Okay, well, thanks very much, Snap. Uh, maybe we'll try and catch up with you on the island somewhere. Are you going onto the island to do? Yeah, I'm going to go onto the island with my friends. I don't have to work again for a few days, so I'm going to try to start to enjoy my trip. Okay, have, have a good trip, and thank we'll catch you, you next much. gig. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Time TV viewers. Um, Steve has now recovered from his uh, birthday party celebrations the night before. And uh, we're now on the beach in uh, Domi Dominica? Dominica. Can't even say it. Dominica. We're now on the beach in Dominica. Dominica. Yes, Dominica, yeah. It's about 100 uh, miles from uh, where we were yesterday, St. Kitts. Down there's a co coconut beach hotel. And if you look way across the bay, you'll see the Song of America moored. Uh, cruised in next to those two uh, extinct volcanoes. It's a beautiful island, Dominica. There's uh, volcanoes everywhere. Um, well, extinct ones, I hope. It must be about 90 degrees. Um, odd little showers keep coming in across the uh, tops of the volcanoes. And it's altogether a really beautiful place. This is the real Caribbean. It's not commercialized at all. And uh, you can just sit out on the veranda of the Coconut Beach Hotel with your rum punch and uh, just take it really easy. So um, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. easier to walk down so we're just going to take a trip back down to the uh, back of the boat down there. So. Right it's uh, five o'clock and uh, Song of America is now leaving uh, Dominica. It's been a very warm day here. Quite blustery though, and uh, we're now leaving Dominica for our next leg, uh, which is about 316 nautical miles down to Trinidad. Luggershaw at the preschool playgroup. Uh, I'm going to talk to Lynn End, and I've never seen such a well-behaved bunch of kids. Lynn, how do you get them so quiet? 
Well, they're just sat down for their milk at the moment. Oh, that's so what it, does it. It's quiet time now when they sit down and have a drink and a biscuit and a piece of fruit. But they have been playing since they came in. Um, we had a picnic. We've had a picnic week this week yeah. where they've all brought their picnic lunch in the morning and the afternoon, and uh, which they all enjoy. Well, they all what age? What age group are they? They're threes and four-year-olds. Right. So this is a, obviously the preschool thing. Preschool. Yeah. Do you have many children that come along? We have 45 children on the books now. Yeah. But we, up until July, we had 80 on our books. Oh, okay. But uh, 44 have just gone to school, into the nursery class, and um, we had 12 new ones come in in September. So that makes us the 45. Right, so it, you've still got places here for anybody who wishes to take the children along, haven't you? That's right, we've got plenty of places at the moment, because they, the children now only go to school once a year at Luggershaw Primary School. Mm -hmm. So although we've just lost 44 children, we now don't lose any till next July to go to school. I see. But, and, but there are still places. And there's still places, yeah. Last one. Yeah, the fast one. Oh, well, that's oh. nice, isn't it? Oh, this might be a bit stiff, this one. Oh, this, this big one might be old. It will stick its legs down, down to there. The legs go down to there, do they? No. No. But the little ones do. Look. No, you want some big babies? And what's your name? Um, Amy. Katie, what are you doing? Make me cake. Make the cake. Oh, my God. How are we going to eat all these cakes today? Maybe we can save them for Christmas, can we? No? We've got, got to eat, eat them today. I'm going to a party next week. Are you? Whose party is that? Mine. Oh, your party? Yeah. How old are you going to be? Four. You're going to be four. How are you funded here, Lynn? We're we only funded by the fees that are paid by the parents, which is £2 a session, and any and our fundraising, which we do every year. To what keep what sort of things do you do for fundraising? We usually have a big summer fete on the Luggershaw Wreck every June and then at Christmas we have either a Christmas fair or a um, Christmas raffle. We have a big Christmas raffle and a Christmas fair and then we do odd things throughout the year like the children about Easter time they always do a sponsor. They, we have run a sponsorship for them, usually something simple that they can do like pedalling bikes around the playground or collecting. Well, they've got to go around so many times on the bikes. For That's them. right, yeah. and we've done a treasure hunt where they had, to, they had a, a sheet of paper with certain pictures on, they had to collect them and bring them in. And then we've done colours with them where they have to recognise the colours. Mm. Uh, we have various raffles throughout the year. At, um, and, uh, Which you get by anyway. We get yeah. by, yes, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, anybody with fundraising ideas or any, anything else, and don't forget, there's, there's plenty of space here for kids, and it's a wonder, one, wonderful atmosphere, and everybody is enjoying them. I, I want to stay here. Can I come back to school? Yeah, if you want to. <laughs> Lynn, thanks very much for talking to us. Okay, then. Bye-bye. Right, thank you. Right, well, you all remember the rock and roll chef from last week. Well, this week, it's a bit different. We've come over to Middle Wallet to meet with Angie Ballard. Now, if you look at all this here, you wonder what we're doing talking about Christmas. Well, Christmas isn't that far off, and this is really a German Christmas, isn't it, Angie? It is, yes. <laughs> I like to introduce all these products. Yeah. Uh, we got here the German Christmas cake, yeah. which is very nice. Uh, once we got it with marzipan, and this is a butter, butter stollen, made with out of butter. So we have different kind of biscuits, and... Uh, I'm sure here a lot of German are living around Andover and they know all about it, but I like to introduce it to the English people as well, of course. And also we got here the Glühwein, which is very delicious for the Christmas time. The Glühwein, that's very interesting. That, yes. that looks very, very good. But what's, what's a Butterstollen? Butterstollen yeah. got uh, almonds in it and raisins. Yeah. It's like your Christmas uh, cake, mm -hmm. but not that rich. Yeah, no it right. is a little bit less sweet, so, and it's delicious to tea or coffee in the afternoon. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, the main reason we're here is because you are actually a, a gourmet cook, aren't you? 
Yes, I started in June with my business and uh, it was very successful actually uh, in the meantime of the uh, summertime and uh, it is a lot of fun to meet a lot of people here around and uh, I enjoy it actually. But I like to introduce it to the people that they exactly know what I'm doing for them. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. So, and this is what it's called, Steve. Delicate. Delicate, you pronounce it. Delicatessen, Delicate, yes. Very clever. Essen, Essen, of course, means a food or eating in German. So we separated that, and so we got a German-English word in once. <laughs> so there we are. You've got a traditional German catering service. So we'll give you the phone number a bit later on. But uh, you're going to cook us something, aren't you? Yes, I will. Okay. Well, let's go and have a look over there. All right. Follow me to the kitchen, folks. Before we start cooking, obviously the most important thing here this morning is... The glue vine, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> and that's not tea in there, is it? No, I put it in this for the meantime. Yeah. Normally you uh, put it in a big pot mm -hmm. and uh, all the family drinks of it. It's a nice thing before Christmas, very cozy. And then Christmas time really starts. Soon we put our glue vine in the pot. What is glue vine? It's spiced wine, isn't it? It's a spiced wine and uh, you can uh, put some orange in it, mm -hmm. a little bit of lemon, mm -hmm. and it's very nice really. Great. Well, should we have a go at it? Yes, we okay. will have a go. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, it's and it's hot. Very hot, yes. Yep. And actually, uh, the Stollen goes nice with it. Mm -hmm. Even in the evening, you don't need to have the Stollen in the afternoon for coffee mm -hmm. and uh, tea. It's nice with the Glühwein as well. So, it's quite, is it quite hot? It is, yeah, but... Do you, how do you do it? You want to take it like, like that? Okay. Woods. Cheers. Cheers. There we go. Cheers. How about that Glühwein? Post. Prost, well, the Germans Prost. are here. I didn't even say hello. Guten Tag. Mm. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. Very, very good indeed. Refreshing, yes. Mm. Splendid. I put a little bit of orange juice in it as well. Oh, right. Yes. That's great. So that's great for Christmas, isn't it? It is. Really wonderful. Really okay, well, feeling refreshed, we'll go on with the cooking, shall we? We do. I think. Let's, let's do that. All right. Well, Angie, how long have you been doing all this? Since uh, June, actually. Really? Yeah, this summer. Yeah, I had a lot of barbecue parties, and uh, I fixed a lot of salads, of course. I had an introducing party in the Eagle Inn in Abbots mm -hmm. The lady was that nice and uh, gave me an opportunity to introduce all my food, mm -hmm. and I had a lot of guests coming, actually. Yeah, it was yeah. a lot of fun, and it was very nice. Simmons tells, tells me you used to sing in New York, is that right? <laughs> Not in New York, no, in Dallas. I used to in work Dallas, in, in Dallas, Dallas yes. Really? And I learned a lot there as well. Yeah. Uh, I worked in a private clubhouse mm -hmm. and I used to live there three and a half years. And of course, of this, uh, in that way, I got all my ideas for the buffets. Yeah. Oh, right, I see. Yeah. Okay. Right, so um, let's, let's uh, go on with this. Let's uh, see what you're going to cook for us. All right. What have, we got? what have we got here? First of all, I'll show you and introduce the frikadellen, mm -hmm. which are meatballs. This is half pork and half uh, beef yeah. with onions and herbs. The other side over there, the big pieces of meat, is mm -hmm. pork and mm -hmm. it's called schnitzel. Mm -hmm. You can prepare this with vegetables. A lot of pubs actually order this already. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a nice dish for Sunday lunchtime or in the evening. There we got the frankfurters, but we call it bockwurst because there's a lot of ham in it actually. Right. No. Yeah grease or fat at all mm -hmm. and this is a traditional German kraut salad which mm -hmm. is made of out of cabbage mm -hmm. with oil vinegar garlic and also the cucumber it's great isn't it so yeah. Uh, this bockwurst is quite nice mm -hmm. for children, they love it, mm -hmm. you can prepare it with uh, uh, chips mm -hmm. and also vegetables. Mm -hmm. You can prepare all my products actually as a dish at home. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I must admit this glue vine is going down very well, Steve. Absolutely excellent. Very, very good. It's essential in the kitchen to have a glass of glue wine, especially in the German kitchen, isn't it? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so here, those are the ham into... And what's this? this is These are fried onions. Yep. And I get them here in a few shops. Mm -hmm. I'm very thankful for that, that I get them here, because yep. it's always nice and tasty. So I put this on now. And, and all good cooks use gas, bit. of course. Pardon? All good cooks use gas. Yes, of course. Yep. That's the best thing. <laughs> well, here we go. The cooking is starting. See Jason off to my left getting very hungry over there. <laughs> I try with all my cooking mm -hmm. not too much fat. Also, with all my salads I have, like potato salad, pasta salad, mm -hmm. tuna fish salad, is actually without mayonnaise. I try not to use too much grease and fat 
because I got a lot of customers. They're also vegeta uh, vegetarians. Vegetarians. Yeah. yeah. And they like the kraut salad and the pasta mm -hmm. salad. Yeah. yeah. So I put right. the sauerkraut in there like it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you have a big family, you use two big jars. I'm able to get the 850 gram portions of sauerkraut. This sauerkraut is with white wine mm -hmm. and a little bit of salt mm -hmm. and uh, tastes very nice. And now I put the pineapples in with the juice. Pineapples? Pineapples. It makes it nice, sweet. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you could place in the middle of this now a piece of garment. And you have a whole dish for the whole weekend. You have only one pot and one pot more mm -hmm. for your potatoes. Now I see, right? And then this is done a little bit, I pour it over there yeah. and then the lid comes on and it goes in the oven for an hour and that's all. Gives a nice taste. It's delicious, isn't it? So I pour this on here now, goes in here. All this fried onions, it's very nice. It smells very good. I prepare it later, of course, with my fried sausage, with a bratwurst, mm -hmm. because easily you can eat sauerkraut Steve, come look at this. Here, and potatoes amazing. we had your breakfast yet Steve <laughs> <laughs> no I haven't actually yeah, yeah. Happens. and potatoes and the fried bratwurst which yeah. is a dish a whole dish for the winter it's mm. very nice actually put this in here so I put the lid on now the lid goes on and then it comes in the oven there's no meat in it in the moment so I can say half hour is enough put it on six seven when you got a piece of garment in there, of course, put it first off nine, on yeah. nine, yeah. for a half hour, and the next hour on five, probably. So the, the garment can go in, yes. in with it. Yeah, okay. and it all has a very nice taste later. Well, welcome back to the studio. Hope you enjoyed that spot with Angie. Angie from Germany, I think that was really, really good. Hope you enjoyed the umpa music as well. That was quite fun. Yeah, and thanks to Angie. She sent some stuff back to the studio for us guys who weren't there. Yeah, some, some, some really, really, really good stuff, yeah, actually. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was excellent. I'm still, I still can't eat anymore. I'm full up. I know Steve's holding a, a bottle of sausage at the moment. We'll show you those in a minute. Right, um, we're going to do a competition with Angie um, a bit later on. But first, the results of this week's or last week's competition, mm -hmm. which were, um, who was that middle distance miss, distance athlete? What was his name? Brendan, Brendan Foster. Brendan Foster, and um, where does the amber nectar come from? Australia. Australia. So um, we're going to plunge our hand into the golden bucket. In fact, I think if I hold it, I'm going to get Steve to do it because Steve's got this very loud T-shirt on which says Nintendo on or something. <laughs> and there he is, clutching his <laughs> clutching his <laughs> bottle of sausages. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I, I pulled them last week, but uh, okay. Go on then. Go on. Then. Where's the brush? You're not sweeping up this week. You no, it's a bit it. wet, so I, I was going to use. Um, well, I haven't got my flippers on, actually. Probably got something to do with it. Hang on. Get on with it, honestly. Just put <laughs> down your sausages. We've only got right, for we show, have. Sorry, this is for, this is what's the prize? Oh, the twenty-five pounds worth of clothing at Foster's, or a pair of designer jeans. Yes. And the answer is. The answer. The is. is <laughs> Olive Powell, <laughs> Olive, <laughs> Olive's won again. Yeah, Olive won that <laughs> Olive. medallion, didn't she? Olive won the medallion, and Olive, you've beaten all these right. people in this draw. And you're gonna, what's, what's her husband's name? Cliff. 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 Cliff, you're gonna have to go around to Foster's and get yourself a designer t-shirt or a designer pair of jeans. So I'm sure there's something around there you'll like. It's not yeah, well, not no, quite like, um, loud. they don't sell them around there, do they? No, no. It's just as well. So Olive, well done, you've won. You've won, and I'm saying Cliff around then, Get yourself a pair of uh, designer somethings. Anyway, thanks for entering that competition. We had thousands of entries. It's really good. Oh. And thank you, people from Salisbury, who rang in. Don't forget to ring us on 390. 390. 390. 390. Thank you very much. And the fax is? 390. 391. I don't have to say anything anymore. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> what are you doing with those? Um, I was going to show them to you. Thank you very much. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. They're really good. German sausages. This is, this is a competition coming up now for Angie Ballard, who's going to come to your home anywhere in Andover, Salisbury, Romsey, or wherever, all those points north, south, west, and east. Or oh, Amesbury now. Or Amesbury. Yes. And cook you a wonderful meal for two. And uh, Town TV are going to chuck in a bottle of wonderful German wine. Yep. Wonderful German wine. Wonderful German <laughs> wine. And... Um, 
So she's going to come to your house and cook your meal for two. We'll probably come along and film it. You know, one of those little candlelit things. Oh, I'm quite good. It's a great prize, actually. It's very unusual, isn't it? Yeah. So you're going to have Angie in your house. So ring us on this number. Jason will put this up on screen. 390-390. Right. Um, what are the questions? Here we go. No, I haven't seen them before. <laughs> no. <laughs> what is a city in Germany that the German sausage or hot dog was named after. It's not Bratwurst, but they look like this. Oh God, that's such a clue, isn't it, honestly? Because Tony's been to Germany a lot, haven't you, Tony? Yes, I lived there for a year one time. Yeah, there we are, but we're not going to tell you all about that. Yeah. <laughs> What's the city in Germany that the German sausage, or the hot dog, was named after? And it's not the hamburger, it's the other one, isn't it? Yeah, it so is indeed. It's the other one. And uh, question two, there's only two this week, Name the, firm, firm, name the famous German tennis player who won Wimbledon when he was 17. And it rhymes with the other name for a London bus. Yep, it does indeed. <laughs> yeah. You want me to say it? No, 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 no. So, question two. Name the famous German tennis player who won Wimbledon when he was 17. And his surname sounds a bit like this slang for a London bus. So you got these two questions? Right, ring in on 390. 390. 390. 390. God, what a t-shirt. Oh, no. Jason, how can, you, how can you film it? How can you film that? Town TV on tour. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are. Well, that was a good week. I enjoyed it. Where did you go? You went to the playgroup? And I had all the wonderful kids. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was great fun. I went to the cooking. Where did you go? I went to the cooking as well. You went to the cooking as well. Jason went there as well. Jason. We all went there. So um, thanks for watching the show. I think we're going to play you out with some... Umpa music, I think. Don't you think so? Sounds like a good idea. So, we'll, um, one, we'll on. a two, a one, two, three, four.